Welcome to part two of On the Trail of Charles II, where in this episode we will be visiting Boscobel House. After leaving White Lady's Priory in 1651, fleeing from the disastrous Battle of Worcester, Charles then found himself taking refuge here at Boscobel House. Boscobel House is a handsome 17th century timber frame lodge and was built by John Gifford, a local landowner from Chillingham in Staffordshire. Guildford was a Catholic and his new house hidden in a woodland was well suited to hiding Catholics seeking refuge from religious persecution. Despite looking architectural coherent with its dramatic black and white exterior, Boscobel House is not all that it seems to be. A closer inspection reveals that some of the timbers are in fact painted brick, a 19th century attempt to disguise a later extinction. The oldest part of the house, now called the North Range, consists of the inner two bays of the long low wing. Dating from the 16th century, this early building was later extended and its ground floor houses the 19th century dairy. Behind the north range is the most impressive part of the house, the tall timber frame lodge built some time before 1624. The farm buildings all date from the 19th century, except for the long timber frame stabling barn, which survives from the 17th century. Oscar Bell's farmyard is a well-preserved example of a 19th century small plan farm. It would have once been a busy working farmyard. The stabling barn is divided into two stables for working horses at the east end and a large cow house in the centre. Hay and straw were stowed above. Walter Evans rebuilt the farmyard to the new 19th century specifications of efficiency and productiveness. A compact and enclosed farmyard with buildings facing into it and directly accessible from one another. These tasks, such as collection of manure, to spread on the fields. Farm labourers could also be kept hard at work. Behind the North Range, where only the footings remain in the ground, were the brew house and the bake house. An extension was built probably in the late 18th century to link these buildings to the large kitchen whose fireplace remains in the wall. The kitchen was linked to the North Range at its western end. The building fell into ruin and was removed in 1969. The cart shed protected valuable machinery from the weather and alongside it a set of brick buildings incorporated a ball pen which is now the public toilets. A hen house and a smithy which is still in working order with its late 19th century equipment. The entrance hall at Boscobel is one of the oldest parts of the house. This room formed the western bay of the two-bayed late 16th century house. The 
parlour was the main room of the house. Its size and layout have remained unchanged since the 17th century, although the furnishings are largely Victorian. It was into this room that Charles was brought on a damp September evening in 1651, tired and in low spirits. The oratory is perhaps the most puzzling room in the house. Part of the original structure of the building, it forms the ground floor of a timber frame multi-angular projection. The opening onto the garden is original, but as a window only, not a door. The fireplace was inserted probably in the 18th century when a new kitchen was built outside with its own large chimney stack. The door from the parlour is original but the alcove to the left has been much altered and may hide an older doorway. The squire's room was once the main bedroom. It was larger, about the same size as the parlour below. Probably during the 18th century, it was divided to create a separate room next door. Well lit and heated, the squire's room offered views over the garden and woods beyond. It remained the main bedroom, although the late 19th century, the family seldom stayed here and it was kept mostly for show. A door beside the fireplace leads into a small chamber, one of Boscobel's secret places. In the 17th century, this little room may have served as a closet for a closed stall. In the floor was a trapdoor, from which stairs are recorded as leading down into a small door at the bottom of the chimney stack, perhaps to allow fugitives to escape directly into the garden. Next door is the white room, which took its name because of its 19th century white painted furniture and bed coverings. During the 19th century, the attic was converted to provide further accommodation. The old spinning wheel used by Dame Joan Pederall stood in the main room. The present one is a replacement. The bower room at the south end was used as a bedroom and the wall paintings were added in the 19th century as a reflection on the Catholic associations of the house. It contains the second of Boscobel's secret places, just at the top of the stairs. This is most likely to have been Charles's hiding place. Thomas Blunt's 1660 description lends weight to this hiding place being Charles's, describing it as, His Majesty got up early and near the secret place where he lay, and the convenience of a gallery to walk in where he had observed to spend some time in his devotions, and where he had the advantage of a window, which surveyed the road from Tong to Brewood. During the 19th century, the whole ground floor of the North Range became Boscobel's dairy. The western room was the settling room, lined with wide shallow brick troughs. Cool water was pumped into the troughs to keep the milk fresh while the cream settled at the top. The stone trough was used to empty out the milk pans and equipment and store the cream pots. When dairy operations at Boscobel House expanded in the early 20th century, this room was used to salt pork. The scullery was in the middle of the North Range. Here, 
The dairy maids made butter and cheese. The large boiling vat in the northwest corner of the room heated water to pass through the cheese vat and churn the cream into curds. The end room was used for processing the cheese and forming the butter and storing both until ready for market. The garden was carefully illustrated in the first published engraving of Boscobel in 1660, and although it may have been embellished because of its dominance in the picture, it is still typical of a garden for its type of house in the 17th century. By the late 18th century, the garden had been reduced in size, as the land around the house was turned over for new crops. In the 17th century, Boscobel was a remote lodge in a dense woodland. John Gifford named his house after Bosco Bello, or Beautiful Wood, but it was also a managed woodland. The royal oak that we see today grew from an acorn of the original tree that Charles II hid in. After the restoration in 1660, the tree attracted many visitors who took pieces as souvenirs which gradually killed it. English heritage have planted many trees to restore the lost woodland and to reclaim Boscobel's isolated feel. Boscobel House is an interesting place to explore and has a long intriguing history and is well worth a visit. Join me in the final episode of On the Trail of Charles II as we will be visiting Mosley Old Hall.